you know, people like Edgar Wright seem to recognise that. You've got you've got recent posters by him where you know his his thought processes go directly into the poster. The good thing about Afterlife that I worked on was that Ricky Gervais kind of he had final say and he also had really clear thoughts from the beginning about what he wanted. And that that poster was done in like I don't know three three or four rounds, which is pretty rare. Usually those these posters have so many iterations. You go for like over 10 rounds of changes you know first round is a load of freelancers and people in the agency chucking a ton of ideas onto a deck that deck gets literally skimmed through by someone in the marketing uh, department they'll kind of like pick a few that they like goes back to the agency and it's just like a back and forth of seeing literally right. what you know what kind of sticks yeah with ricky it was like okay here's what i like here's what i don't like and then he obviously left left the communication to the marketing team but the poster was exactly what he wanted it worked and yeah that was just like that was one of the most successful and enjoyable kind of projects i worked on because it was so clear and that's communication is absolutely the key thing welcome to your local cineplex back guys this is your local cineplex again i hope you uh, had a fun break between episodes and uh today's episode is another fun one as they always are i have a great artist i really have come across your work big admire i love it it's i love i love how you i love your work <laughs> i'm trying to say it i'm trying to say it more uh with more words or big fancy words and sound. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes those simple <laughs> words are the best. I, I like your work. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, that's about it. I like your work. And uh, it, it's James. And uh, so yeah, James, let uh, the, the listeners, the audience know if they don't know your work already, if they don't know you, let them know who you are. Thanks very much, Zach, um, for that wonderful concise introduction that was cool um <laughs> i'm yeah i'm james um i guess some people might know me online um i go by james 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 creative uh, on instagram and a lot of people kind of in, have ended up kind of referring to me as james 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 i don't oh, know that might be to do it <laughs> yeah there you I'm go see yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might become a thing like <laughs> It might become just like an artist name that I just go with. I'm into a kind of like quite a lot of angles of poster art. Uh, I studied graphic design originally a long time ago in the UK, down in Brighton in the UK, the art university there. For a long, long time, I was kind of going through the kind of freelance gigs, uh, graphic design. Things kind of got a little bit stale. I took a part-time job at a, a cinema a local cineplex um ah. and <laughs> it kind of like reignited something for me around the same time a lot of like alternative movie posters were coming to the fore like mondo was starting to gain popularity i was also going through a bit of a rough time as well lots of personal matters so i really needed to focus on something and i decided to like pick up the pencil again and start kind of like drawing and trying to make my own alternative movie posters it was like something that was a good good way to fix on yeah it's and it was such a good community at the time and we're talking sort of like i don't know six years ago maybe poster spy i don't know if people have heard of poster spy yeah. it was yeah a really good like community of people all around that all sharing imagery and you know you're, you're kind of like it, it's, it's just it's a perfect way to focus if you've got a movie um, that's your brief right there, you know, right. represent that movie. It's kind of like, it's simple in that way. And there's so many different ways you can interpret it. Kind of like got, got illustrating again, the kind of digital part of it was good for me. It took the anxiety out of it because you can obviously go back a couple of steps with a couple of taps, which yes. was always a big thing with like me with drawing. I had huge anxiety of, oh, I've wasted my time. You know, that kind of right. thing. I had that in the past with, um, you know, drawing with pen and pencil to the point where it was like, it was putting me off drawing. 
but with the, um, the like with the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil, yeah. it just seemed like a really neat concept. It's a game um, procreate. Thing. Yeah, it absolutely, totally was. Everything seems to kind of come together. Like the right. popularity of the Apple Pencil, iPad Pro, um, this community coming up, like it just seemed to like cause a real explosion. Um, right, right. And that was something that I, yeah, I loved being part of at the time. So, yeah, just started drawing um, and using my graphic design skills to to make illustrated um, poster work. Um, things have kind of grown from there to the point where I'm now also doing uh, like official key arts for entertainment. So actual movie posters that you'll see, uh, things like uh, and TV shows as well. I worked on the poster for Afterlife. Uh, on Netflix with Ricky Gervais, some stuff for British Film Institute, um, and these are all. I mean, these are all kind of posters that use existing photography, and you have to, you know, it's a completely different skill set from drawing posters. And you know, you guys have covered it uh, a lot on here about the good and the bad of of, <laughs> of, key, of key art, good posters. Yeah. yeah. And you guys, you, you're totally right. It's it's highly dependent on on the marketing team above you and how right how clued up they are and how much they want their way against yeah. you know what even the directors and producer want. It can it can get it's a, it's a huge waste of money basically. I would I would term marketing films as just a huge like they chuck money at stuff and see what sticks basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, I wish they the kind of target you know. Yeah. I just, uh, I just, no, no worries. I finished with that. No, I I I just wish they would you know find the talent that they want, give a clear instruction from the filmmaker and let them come up with some options. Like, that would just save so much time. You'd get a hugely improved product. Right. Um, and, you know, people like Edgar Wright seem to recognize that. You've got you've got recent posters by him where, you know, his, his thought processes go directly into the poster. The good thing about Afterlife that I worked on was that Ricky Gervais kind of, he had final say, and he also had really clear thoughts from the beginning about what he wanted. And that, that poster was done in like, I don't know, three three or four rounds, which is pretty rare. Usually those, these posters have so many iterations. You go for oh. like over 10 rounds of changes, you know. First round is a load of freelancers and people in the agency chucking a ton of ideas onto a deck. That deck yeah. gets literally skimmed through by someone in the marketing uh, department. They'll kind of like pick a few that they like goes back to the agency and it's just like a back and forth of seeing literally right. what you know what kind of sticks yeah with ricky it was like okay here's what i like here's what i don't like and then he obviously left left the communication to the marketing team but the poster was exactly what he wanted it worked and yeah that was just like that was one of the most successful and enjoyable kind of projects i worked on because it was so clear and that's communication is absolutely the key thing for sure it, it was a shame when I first learned I was getting, you know, entering this world, this industry, and I was speaking with a screenwriter. Let me know. He, he's done some pretty good work. I mean, he's, he's definitely up there successful. And he was like, yeah, I wish we had a say in the posters. I'm like, what? Come again? He's like, yeah, we, <laughs> we don't have a say. It's, uh, it's entirely on the marketing department. Especially if like we're working with something like Netflix. It's, yep. Yeah. He had no say in his poster art, his key art. I'm like, you wrote the thing. <laughs> I would think you would know what your vision was, but it's it's a real shame. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes we would turn back turn in posters that had got to the final round and kind of been signed off by the marketing department. And then yeah, exactly that. The um the producers, directors, screenwriters—they literally said, "Like that's not our movie." But <laughs> that was the that was the feedback on, uh, right. on on one project, and it's yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's uh, it's it's obviously you know it's it's all done to to not represent the movie, but to get get people through the doors, get the talent big, put the names right. in the right order, and yeah. Yeah. in a way, it must kind of work in in a purely marketing way. 
otherwise it, they wouldn't keep doing it. Right. Um, I guess when you hold an attachment to the film when you come out, that's not the art that you really want to treasure. You want to treasure something that's triggers memories. And I guess that's that's then where alternative movie posters and special edition like uh, steelbook covers and stuff like that. That's right. that's when that kind of art comes in. Um, yeah, because I think it, that's taking that place. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. It's, this, the, the, the work you're, that's produced is coming out of these studios. It's not the work that you know we grew up on and that we hold dear. It's, you're not seeing a Drew Street or a John Allen, a Bob Peak. You're not. <laughs> definitely, definitely like more artistic, more uh, you know, a little bit more creative. But it, it all ties into to that kind of wow factor rather than kind of more information based fo- like focus on you know the main the main posters you know the stuff that poster posse does is great in that it's mostly dig- digitally based gets passed around on social media you know something like that is going to be shared so much uh, so much more than you know the poster design because it's unusual it's different it, like i said it's, it's creative so yeah people like disney have really embraced that in the past few years and the poster posse do incredible stuff they've got a massive roster of different artists now different styles um it's something that other companies should sort of learn from you know not just in the movie industry but across across a ton of different ips that creative art is fantastic on social media it really stops people in their tracks and if you want to market something use that it's, yeah. it's kind of hopefully it will happen but um i'd have thought it would have kind of been proven already uh, right. right now, I guess, I guess Disney have the budget as well. Like they can, yeah. they can thread. Peace. I come from the world of graphic design. I understand advertising. I understand the purpose of this. So I get it. But why can't it be a good compromisation of doing what you needed to do to buy tickets, but also because it's been done before. That's what. That's the puzzling part. Yeah. Is <laughs> they know what's worked. I and mean, something happened in the 1990s where it like, switched. Yeah. <laughs> and supposedly, yep. you know, big, big stores like Walmart have a set and with the poster art, yeah. it's like, because they want a certain look on, like, on the shelves. I hope that's not true anymore. I hope that was stopped. <laughs> I heard about it's, that in a well, documentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think we must have watched the same thing. Um, yeah. yeah, it's kind of crazy to think that, isn't it? That um, well, at the end of the day, I guess the business defines exactly what the design should be, and that then extends to what was then VHS covers and, and DVD covers on on Schwarz, uh, shelving. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. But you're right; it, it did work before. Um, so yeah, what changed? Um, I guess more. F- focus groups i've heard stuff like when you have an illustrated poster go to a focus group and then it's like an a b test of say here's the characters here's like they would show an illustrated poster what immediately what comes in mind what kind of film is this and people think it's like an animation like the first thing they see when they see it for like two or three seconds they think oh it might be an illustration it's that kind of stuff that it's tick boxes isn't it it's marketing via tick boxes and oh they've done that but the thing hasn't lived, you know, that poster hasn't right. lived and been around in people's consciousness for, for a little while. It was literally chucked in front of someone in a white room and they right. say, oh, this or that. Things need to, exactly. to live and become a cultural like device right. and then that's when but, they'll become yeah. loved as well. You're not going to get an authentic measurement in a vacuum. No, and you, that's exactly. right. I'm pretty much saying exactly what you're saying this differently, <laughs> but in a vacuum. <laughs> And so, yeah, you're not going to get a, a best thing because, yeah, it needs to live, it needs to grow, it needs to, it, it will become part of the zeitgeist. And yeah, don't worry, absolutely. Don't make your money. Yeah, <laughs> Especially that's right. Especially if you get it to that level. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Long term, they'll be able to make money as well. Right. It's, it's always short term thinking, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. That's that's across everywhere. Everyone's in it now for a quick buck. I think I think it's in that documentary we both watched. I think it was twenty four by thirty six. Is yeah, the documentary. It. Uh, it seems like it was uh, the opinion of the of the older artists, you know, the, the artists that in the height of the eighties and older. It seemed like they blamed technology. It was the it was the creation of graphic computers being used to produce posters. It seemed like that's what 
happen. Because now, it almost the studios now suddenly had the power to create their own posters. Mm. And no longer the artist was the person that the studio had to go to. It was almost like the, the studio was kind of at the mercy of the artist. Can you make your magic happen, please? You know? Yeah. And so that leverage was lost the minute the computer was created, Photoshop was created. So they found so, they found their templates yeah. and they uh, yeah. they they saved they saved dollar on right. artists. They got exactly what they wanted, which was a right. you know big white thing with people's heads. Um, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, artists, yeah. I think I think that that is quite a lot of it. Um, to be fair, and it was probably like the best thing ever at the time. They were like, right. oh wow, this this is what technology can do for us. Right. Whereas in actual fact, you you look back at those covers and they all totally look the same. They do, yeah. It's it's a shame, but at the same time, it's ironic because it's that same technology that has grown and got more sophisticated. Now it's helping you and I, and it's yeah. causing a lot of other artists to be inspired to produce this digital work mostly, yeah. unless you go get it printed. But it's, it's the same technology that's caused this, and so you know, it's like a, yeah. it's weird. It's, it's almost like saving it again. Yeah, I think it's the I think it's the human the human touch, like the human input from a pencil. I, I, like, right. I guess through the through the nineties, Photoshop was great, but you're basically moving around photographs um, and adding type. Which you know, I'm being a graphic designer, I'm really into, and you can get really really creative with that. Yeah. And in the nineties, they they super did. You know, they 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 cut up the rules using computers. Um, just not on film posters, but yeah, I guess that kind of human input has come back in again with Wacom devices and right. yeah, the iPads, and I guess that's kind of like sparked a little bit of uh, humility into computer-generated work again. Um, so yeah, you can right. get things done. You can get things done quickly via computers, but you also have a little bit of, of human input, like from direct yeah. from the hand. You know? Right. It's that. It, it's almost a perfect balance now that you have mm. the quickness, uh, and the quickness and convenience, and just the, the crazy endless possibilities. It uh, is. I mean, yeah, the amount of brushes and yeah. you know that you can you can use now is insane. And it's it's always funny though. Like, there's so yeah. many. This, yeah, yeah, mix the brush. You can literally do pretty much do what you can. Um, to a certain level with with oils and acrylics it's, the, the technology is still getting there you know it's still it's still getting better and better but a lot of people wouldn't tell wouldn't be able to tell the difference now for sure i think like right. if a layman saw a real oil painting and you know a digitally created oil in inverted commas uh, i think yeah. i think it'd be pretty hard to to tell the difference now if they're both yeah. printed out you know like a cheap clay right. print or whatever right yeah because yeah. there's yeah i i just started adding the like, canvas texture to my yeah. pieces. So once you add that, like, can you even tell the difference? Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It's so realistic, yeah. and I, there's, I'm sure there'll be things developing that you know, you'll have you'll have a very varied uh, canvas texture, and then the brushes will probably start to interact over the texture that you've created. Right. Like that's, I guess, that's like another step to make it. What what Adobe do like with their brushes with um, What's the guy's name? He he, he does all of their, like, all their brushes, oh, right. and then yes, yeah, so, so he has all of those brushes. And then whenever you like go to an artist and you sort of say, "Oh, what brush did you use for that?" And loads of people end up saying like, "Oh yeah, it's just the it's just the default Photoshop <laughs> brush." <laughs> so such a classic yeah. comment that sort of comes up it now. Is. Also, yeah. said, yes, classic Photoshop brush, but you know, soft. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I. Yeah, I was, I'm guilty of that for the longest time. <laughs> I'd be just using the default stuff and making it work, and I hear other artists kind of yep. saying, well, yeah, I, I customize this brush and I do all these settings, and I'm sitting over here like, I don't do any of that. <laughs> just, no, it's, like, it's whatever works. Some, it's it's right. fun to play around with all of these different it brushes. Is. But once you kind of, you're used to some of the defaults, it's stuff that you always go back to, and if it's part of your process, um, part of your routine, and you know, why why change really? Yeah. Explore, explore, and see if there's better stuff that you can do. But if you know you can do stuff quickly and comfortably with with kind of stuff you're used to, stick with it. Yeah, it's fine. 
There's nothing yeah. no shame in the default brush, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just started kind of playing around with the brush settings. And... Look so closely at the little details and things that make Strew Down, Strew Down. I was talking to another artist the other day and he was showing me some of his work and he'd done these kind of like really fine little lines, like hardly visible. They were just outside the line work on characters' heads and faces and stuff. Right. And I, I, I looked at it and I said, oh, I think you might have left some of your like reference marks in and reference lines in. And he said, oh, no, that's something that um, Strudan used to do. It kind of like blends the faces into the background just by putting these tiny, like faint little marks around yeah. the outside of heads and stuff. Like to look at it, you wouldn't know, but if you really zoom in, it's a little technique that um, he picked up. It's crazy. Little things like that. They're so neat. Yeah, I've noticed that on some of my heads. I'm like, why does he do that? I mean, me, me not knowing why he does it. I'm like, it just it works. So I just, I just do it yeah. myself. Cool. Yeah, apparently it, it blends. It blends your eye. Just like blends it with the background a little bit more. It's the same. Wow. It's the same kind of thing that um, I do with key art, and it's a commonly done thing with like poster art. Um, you basically do a Photoshop layer on top of everything with a noise filter. Okay. And then with a blending mode underneath, it just brings all the elements together. So you've got like a comp that might be different heads and a vehicle or whatever. And then that one layer on top with just like noise and you blend it, bring the opacity down and it just brings everything together. Yes. So if you like, if you get like one sheets, um, at the cinema, take a look. And if you look really closely, I'm sure all of them will have this like noise and it's grain, you know, it's not, right. and it's not the printing, it's it's the artist that has applied that yes. over the top of the art just to bring everything together and make it look more realistic. Um, there's so many little tips. It's like right. geeky, nerdy and fascinating. Yeah, like, so I, designer, yeah. you know. I, yeah, really that's cool. what I did. I, I definitely did that. I saw the artist doing that, like I'm doing that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, I saw Sam, he like takes the extra step. He does that noise layer, and then he also does his canvas layer. Yep. And then he'll do like, he'll even, he's so smart. <laughs> he'll do a, he'll duplicate that and then he'll invert it to like, so he has like shadow and highlight in the canvas. Quite, yeah. Makes and it that's, like that's, pop quite a lot. Right. Yeah, Sam's great. Really, really good. At, um, capturing likeness um i i did i did like join the domestica course I, I haven't had the time to like have a look through it yet but um sam was a really big influence on me when i started using the ipad uh he did um an apple event um on oxford street in london so in the main kind of like apple store in London, wow. he basically did a presentation and like a tiny half an hour course or something on how to draw a face um, using an iPad Pro. Um, yeah, and I always remember going down to that, and that was one of the things that really like sparked my my love of yeah. This is this is the kind of thing that I really want to do, you know. And he was talking through his Jaws poster, and and then everyone had a go at using um, an image on the iPad you know, going through his techniques really, really quickly, but really, really clearly. And everyone there was, you know, trendily sitting on a wooden block as in Apple stores you've got, you know, and everyone was, yeah, everyone was having a great time just um, learning about how to use the Apple Pencil. And it's just so accessible, really. It, it's, right. it is fantastic. It is, it's like you say, it, it just, it was a massive game changer. It was. Um, but so, yeah, Sam's fantastic. Really nice guy. I I wish uh, I would have gotten my iPad much sooner. <laughs> I wish I would have gotten it like five years ago. It's, um, what took me so long? It's like, <laughs> I, I, I have the graphic tablet and all that. And it's always kind of been a struggle with me. Even I've pressed myself. I don't keep using it. It's just having that disconnect with the screen yeah. and all that. The old school type thing. And yeah. It's, it's hard. So when I got the iPad, I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I, <laughs> I bought the, the, the screen uh, texture. It's called, like, it's called yep. Paperlike. Paperlike, yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, this is what I need. This is perfect. It's so, it's my so next good. Step, yeah, it's so good. Um, my next step was to actually get the, uh, what's it? Cintiq? 
So I, I, I actually, you know, do it that way. Yeah, it's like the Cintiq is great for kind of um, when you're creating posters that are literally going to be printed large. It's really good for doing it at, almost at scale. So you're not right. zooming in so much into a smaller space. Um, I've, I, first I got the iPad Pro and I then got a Cintiq. Well, first of all, I got one of the like the Intuos ones, like you said, like where you look at right. the screen, but I just could not. I could not manage oh. it. Like the, it's, the disconnect is crazy. And once I, I was used to the iPad Pro, my, my mind was just saying, nah, don't do that. Because I, I bought the Intuos for like retouching on posters, like uh, when you draw in hair and stuff like that on uh, right. on movie posters. It's really easy just to, you know, use that quickly, look at the screen, draw in the hair. I just, I just couldn't do it. Like it's such a disconnect. So I passed on that, got myself a Cintiq. It wasn't, it's not the pro one, but I think it's like a 22 inch HD. Uh, to be honest, I've used it twice since I bought it. I just keep going back to the iPad Pro. <laughs> it's like, it feels, to me, it just feels so much closer than, oh, yeah. than the Cintiq to, um, to what, what it's like drawing on paper. That it's, it's hard to, to reason with like getting the Cintiq out and I'm sure there will be use for it. Like I said, when I'm doing bigger posters more of the time, it will be so much easier to have a bigger screen, kind of draw almost one-to-one. -one. And they are great. Like the Cintiq Pros are incredible, like pretty much 4K, I think. So the resolution's no issue. You can zoom, you know, zoom in really, really close. But yeah, I still think for me, my iPad Pro is something that I just keep going back to on whatever project I do. I'll be interested yeah. to hear, like, when you do get your Cintiq, um, what you think. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, well, I'm kind of glad to know that the use of the iPad Pro is still a bit better. That way, I don't feel like I'm missing out too much. <laughs> you know, no, a lot of people think Pro. it's no way. Like, I think a lot of people think it's like levels. They're like, you know, you've got your Intuos, and then you go to an iPad. Um, and then it's the Cintiq. Now I think they all, ha they all, they're all good for different things. There's no, it's not like, oh, I'm stepping up to this, I'm stepping up to that. Oh. I think they're all good for different things. That's that's what I found. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't feel like you're missing out because you don't have a Cintiq. It's just bigger screen, right? And obviously you can work like natively within Photoshop, like with a right. with a bigger bigger amount of room at the sides and stuff. Right. Um, but yeah, apparently, go ahead. Uh, apparently, Apple are coming out with a larger iPad Pro, like within the next oh. year or two. So I'm kind of like holding off to see if that actually happens. Yeah. That would be that would be like ideal for me, I think. And also, 3D stuff is supposed to be good now as well. You can paint onto 3D models in Procreate, yeah. uh, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, Technology, man. <laughs> technology i know i haven't yeah. even started looking into um 3d stuff because so many so many of my peers now are starting to look into blender and people that i talk to you know they'll they'll, they'll integrate um 3d 3d into posters and it, it creates yeah. you know you don't have to look for a stock image anymore you can you can turn in have it at whatever angle you want right. it renders and it looks real you know it's, it's awesome right yeah i i've I have Blender and I've done like one thing on it. I've done the famous donut tutorial. Yep. And so that's about it. <laughs> How was that? Was uh, it easy? It, How was your donut? Yeah. yeah, it was easy. I was, I'm very proud of it. I, I was yeah. like, this is a decent donut. <laughs> Did it's, you print uh, out your donut? You should have printed out and put it in a frame. <laughs> I should. It's a delicious looking donut. It really is. <laughs> but I want to do it again because yeah, if, if you ask me to do it again, I do it. I can't. I don't remember nothing. <laughs> it's always the same with tutorials. Like yeah. when you're going through, it's like, it's great when you're doing it. I did that with After Effects. I took a big After Effects <laughs> course. Um, came out thinking, oh, that was so good. I produced something so great. I tried to use it like, I don't know, two, two or three weeks later and it all just gone. Whew. Yeah. It's, it's got yeah. such a steep learning curve. Um, right. You can kind of, I, can, I do do motion, but it's always like, I have to go into the software and relearn it almost every time. 
like I'll be on Google. It's like, oh, I know how to do it up to there, but I need now need to go onto Google right. and just like see how I do that little bit. It's not something like in design or Photoshop where you're just you know you're flying around. Sort of. Right. I think it's a great skill. Like if I was to pass on to stuff to people, I would say yeah, start start learning 3D. Um, more and more agencies really like it as well. So like advertising agencies, um, marketing agencies for films. It's a it's a thing it's a thing that they are really like looking for because they'll come up with the concept exactly as we've said and they want someone to visualize it for the first round. Then if you can yeah. come in and say yeah, I'll just I'll crack out a 3D version of it, render it. I can get, I can get you a donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as long as these agencies just come up with a load of donut ideas and like do loads of donut films, then yeah. you're the man. I got this down. Watch out, Paul Shipper. <laughs> 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 donut movie like yeah. Paul Schiffer uh, uh, it's we're at the end of the episode now I have to ask you what are your top three movie posters and you supplied me mm-hmm. with I, yeah I, I supplied you with I supplied you with movie posters to pick my favourites is, is, is impossible so I guess I've gone for my actual favourite which is the Jurassic Park um, original poster. I actually found out the designer's name today, so I'm gonna okay. Tom Martin. Tom, Tom Martin. Martin. Tom Martin. Yeah. Yes. Again, it's because I have memories of being that the right age when the film came out, and I, I think you've talked you talked about this with Richard Davis as well, like just how brave it was just just to show that, and it is it's totally it's totally Spielberg thing to do of not not revealing your monster or whatever until yeah. the movie right. you've literally and it's i don't know it's just it's so simple but it is genius because it's also kind of meta in that it's the logo used in the park uh in the movie so it's almost like it's being tied into the movie another poster i guess this is kind of from being a key artist kind of angle is the little miss sunshine uh, main one sheet, I think it is. I think it was the one sheet, um, which has kind of become quite iconic itself. It's amazing. And it's it's the fact that it's just it was an indie film that has become kind of the poster is almost like as iconic as the film, probably more so. You see it kind of uh, parodied and stuff quite a lot, you know, with the with the van, the VW van. And it's again, it's it's just really clever, but it's just it's done it so understated. It's not flashy, but it yeah. it's, it's it creates like the direction um, and the movement of the van through through typography. So you've got yeah. like uh, sunshine on the right, sure, right. Um, and then it kind of like shrinks as it goes backwards, just as if it would um, with a you know like a swipe, like with a a trail yeah. going behind a car or whatever. Um, all, yeah, it's so clever, and the t- the yeah. fact that the type is all set to the right as well, so you've right. got all all that energy on the right, and oh the cast God. members are like left behind, so you've got everything on the right, and then the characters wow. are kind of like even more kind of left behind on the left. It's like I, I think it's fantastic. It's so minimal, but it does so it much is. with so little. I guess kind of an obvious one for the alternative movie poster scene is Oli Moss's um, Star Wars series, which yeah. uh, kind of like influenced me, influenced a ton of artists uh, who are kind of all making movie posters at the moment. Just clever, genius. Yep. Too clever. It is. <laughs> yeah. Too clever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, I'll put this um, yeah. as my my least favorite poster because it's yeah. too clever thanks so much for taking time out of the day of being amazing and talented and I'm talking to you. well thank you for being amazing and talented yourself <laughs> <laughs> thank and you. for making this podcast and <laughs> inviting me along because <laughs> it's been fun oh, thank it's been you. fun I, yeah you're definitely welcome back and uh, talk more so I hope you do come back me too I hope you'll have me back <laughs> great well folks that is it that's another episode of your of your local cineplex and i will see you next time
拜拜。Tricks are for kids.